Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Charles, because today is the, uh, tw the 1st of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this recorded session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, guys, so um, once again, as I've mentioned before uh, earlier, um, welcome to this recorded session because unfortunately uh, for the next uh, two weeks, uh, the videos are going to be the Traders Espresso and the Tea Time will be coming out in recorded format. So for now, that's of course, um, hopefully everything can get back to normal after that, but uh, unfortunately that these are the measures that we have to take right now. So yep, guys, uh, like I said, I do apologize for not running the videos live. Um, however, you can, I hope you can find these videos useful as well. Um, so, uh, as always, guys, before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JOD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, uh, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. <clears throat> now, a uh, quick update on what's happening here globally. So as you can see, the figure continues to rise. Um, so yep, let's see how this figure will look tomorrow, but most likely we will be uh, above the 6,000, 200,000. So the big question, of course, can we see 7 million by the end of this week? Now, hopefully not, but um, yep, everything's possible. So yep, for now, guys, let's continue observing this. Um, now then, jumping into a few charts, quick mentioning here of the FTSE 100. Now I talked about this one this morning and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier, the 6,231 zone, uh, because that's basically the high of, near the high of yesterday, uh, last week and it also marks the high of the 10th of March. So in order to, for us to get comfortable, uh, to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, we would like to see a nice good push above it. Um, although we're still we're still more on the positive side. Um, however, just for that extra confirmation, we could look at this level uh, and a break of it uh, in order to aim for higher levels because a break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep, maybe more buyers could be joining in here. Now, if we look at the Fibonacci here, for example, if we draw a Fibonacci uh, from that high and drag it up until this low, this March low, you can see that the 50 line here coincides with the 100 EMA. So in other words, kind of uh, not only a push, let's say above the 6,231 could do the trick for more buyers, but also a push above this 100 EMA. So, but like I said, we'll start looking at some higher levels uh, if we get a push above the 6,231 zone, because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. Uh, and yep, and then we'll take it from there. We'll aim for the uh, 6,460 or the 6,536. Uh, the last one here is the highest point of two, th oh, sorry, the lowest point of 2018. Um, and slightly above that, we do have the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci, uh, which could also coincide with the 200 day EMA. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, now the NASDAQ 100. So I looked at this one last week and this is what I was talking about. Basically, yes, um, although the uh, the index was is still forming a somewhat of a rising veg pattern, which of course, according to all the TA rules, tends to break to the downside. However, as you can see, we did have a drift lower, but uh, the uh, the index kind of still uh, ended up pushing back up. So what I was also saying that is in order to aim for or so say aim for lower levels or aim uh, or consider the downside scenario here or a break uh, outside of this uh, rising veg we need to or a drop lower we need to see a, a nice good uh, move here first of all a violation of the lower side of the rising veg and then 
of course, ideally a push uh, below the uh, 9,250 territory here. And then, yes, we could consider uh, deeper extensions to the downside. But for now, as you can see, the index continues to tr uh, to, to push higher. It uh, On Friday, it closed um, near the 9,555 zone. Uh, looking at the cash index right now, it is slightly below that level. However, still, uh, it remains within the pattern. So in a way, for now, as long as it stays within the pattern, the, the more likely scenario is is to the upside because again as i said to consider down the downside here we need to see a drop below the lower side of the wedge first um silver so silver is doing a little bit better than gold already for the second week in a row um and uh yeah it managed to overcome on friday it managed to overcome this key barrier key important level the 17.60 zone i talked about this level last week and uh yeah finally as you can see we managed to get a violation of it and the the mm, the commodity closed above this level above the 17.60 so this kind of confirmed a forthcoming higher high uh and, and today the 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 pressures metal continues to rise as i mentioned before our main target is going to be around the 18.94 95 zone here uh, which is the highest point of this year so far of course so yep let's keep an eye on that one uh but again like i said for now we will aim for that area. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, we might see uh, something like this happening where, for example, in a way, the um, the precious metal could drift higher. If it, let's say, struggles to move somewhere here, somewhere above this area, it may retrace for now. But then if it, let's say, if it retraces and then hits this level here, the 17.60 and finds it as a good area of support, this is where the more buyers, more buyers could ju jump in and push this one higher towards the 18.94 zone, uh, and then yep, we would take it from there, guys. So, but for now, for now, uh, until uh, until then, kind of, we are still leading more to the upside. We are still targeting this 18.94.95 zone, and then we would take it from there because for us, the downside scenario would be uh, on a break. Uh, well, we would consider the downside scenario only after a break of this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March so for now um, it's the the price is nowhere near that uh, this upside line so for now we're leaning uh, a little bit more to the upside uh, now then DXY so uh, looking at this picture here and I talked about DXY last week as well um, and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this highlighted area here roughly between the 98.89 and 98.82 zones uh, levels uh, and they up uh, it continued to drift lower and it also in addition to that not only did it broke this area the highlighted area it dropped below the 98.57. This is one of the levels that I've mentioned as well. That's the lowest point of May. And as you can see, or should I say, uh, it was the lowest pre previous lowest point of May. It created a new low for uh, for May. Uh, the um, the index, the dollar index, continued to slide, and it also closed below this 200-day uh, EMA. You can see that on the 28th of May, it closed a daily candle, so it worked out perfectly. Um, so it kind of now increases the chances of a further drift lower. However, as you can see, we had a uh, on the 29th, we had a drop but then the bulls managed to push the daily candle back above this level here the the low of the 27th of March which is around the 98.27 zone and they've managed to close the candle above it now today we're seeing a bit of a decline here as well it drifted lower it created a new low um, however um, you can see that the bulls are really fighting uh, hard to push this one back up so in a way if let's say in case this uh, index decides to correct a little bit higher still basically long story short if it stays below uh, this little territory here somewhere below the 200 day EMA we will still uh, lean a little bit more to the downside uh, so uh, in a way this is what the, the this is the scenario that we could be looking at uh, especially if the bulls manage to lift the price back above the 98.27 zone so keep your eyes on this one um, but if the if the bulls are strong enough to push the uh, the, the index back above the 98.89 zone then well I mean higher levels could be met again and uh, we could consider a move towards these levels right here so but for now for now guys we are leaning a little bit more to the downside. 
uh, quick update on Ripple and uh, the the, um, the 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 crypto is a little bit um, on the weaker side. I would say uh, comparing it to the to Ethereum and as you can see. Um, the Ethereum. I've I've looked at the, uh, the that crypto this morning. You can have a look at that video. But <clears throat> coming back to Ripple, basically what I was talking about was that uh, in a way, if this barrier here, the 0 0.2050 three zone roughly around there continues to provide resistance then well we could see a nice good slide maybe back towards this level here the uh, the 0 0.1760 and that is marked by the uh, the lowest point of December 2019 so and also as you can see here back in uh, the beginning of May it also provided some decent support so that's why for now uh, we'll be very careful uh, because ideally we would like to see a stronger close above this 0 0.2053 in order to kind of um, let's say aim for higher levels but until then we can see that we keep getting these overshoots but we're not really getting a firm close a day firm daily close above this level so that's why for now we'll keep an eye on on for now we'll keep an eye on this idea of of the crypt of crypto of this crypto staying within this range uh adjpy so quick update here um last week i talked about this one as well and this is what i was talking about where i was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the 72.51 sorry 71.51 territory here um as you can see we had a nice overshoot here and we also had a nice push above the uh the 200 day ema and the friday candle for example last friday candle has stayed above this 200 ema um on the daily chart but uh, of course only fractionally however you can see it still did the trick here for the bulls and the bulls managed to raise the uh the pair towards the 71.42 territory roughly around here which is marked by the low of the 3rd of february um it even overshot that level so in a way if this buying activity continues then the next target here and let me just probably recycle one of these lines um the the next target potential target could be around here the the high of the 19th of february and the, that's roughly around the 70 4.47 zone so keep your eyes on that one that's gonna be that could be our next good um, potential area of resistance um, in terms of the downside on this one well pretty straightforward we need to see a break of this upside line here um, and uh, maybe even uh, at the moment we would consider a drop below the 70.17 zone uh, and then yes we could aim for some, some lower levels until then kind of we're uh, we're still leaning more to the upside and even if it let's say if it starts sliding lower as long as this upside line remains intact we will remain somewhat positive uh us dollar against the swiss franc now here the interesting bit is that uh both of the currencies are not on the stronger side right now, but this is what I talked about uh, last time when I looked at USDCHF, and you can see by the well, the the chart has already shifted more to the right uh, of my arrow here. <clears throat> so the target has been reached today, the uh, 0.9588 zone, which uh, continues to provide decent support, although we did get an overshoot here. Uh, but to be honest, for now, guys, um, in order to aim for lower levels, well, guess what? We need to see at least a daily close below this area in order to aim for lower levels. Until then, we're not really uh doing anything here uh even with the upside uh we would prefer to wait maybe for a push uh back above the 0 0.9681 zone roughly around here as you can see it acted as a very good area of support and resistance as well um and uh yep only then we could maybe aim for the upper side of the range because don't forget that overall we are still within the range and this range has been in play from around the beginning of april so let's see if the lower bound of the range continues to provide support if it does yep we could aim for higher levels but uh, we probably we would probably get a little bit more comfortable with that if we get a push above the 0 0.9681 zone um, euro chf now here the uh, the situation is quite interesting because uh, if you remember last time when I looked at euro chf I was talking about this downside line taken from the high of the 23rd of April and as you can see uh, this is what I was saying that in a way yes we are going to be leaning uh, more to the upside however uh, only up until this downside line and this is exactly what's happening right now so the the pair is finding resistance near this downside line so yep the bulls are struggling to uh, 
push the pair above it for now of course so if they continue to do so then yep the bears could take advantage of the slightly higher higher rate and drive this one back down <clears throat> Now, we can keep an eye on this 1.0710 uh, territory, roughly around here, marked near the high of the 3rd of March, or in other words, the highest point of March. So if we get a nice push uh, above, that, uh, above this barrier here, let me just quickly highlight it very quickly. There we go. So if we get a nice daily daily close as well above this area of course this would automatically place the rate above the downside line and well more buyers could be joining in here so for now guys uh, yes we will be very careful because we, what we're going to do here is we're going to wait for the next move because we want to see if this this downside line will get tested again and uh, if it can continue provide resistance if it can then yep uh, a nice good drop could be considered as well um, however if you want to be a little bit more on the cautious side you could just wait for a drop below this key area of support which previously acted as a good area of resistance near the 1.0655 zone so a nice good drop below the 1.0655 could aim for we could uh, could open the door towards uh, lower levels again but if this if we do see a nice daily close above this area above this 1.0710 uh, then well uh, we could uh, start maybe considering uh, the upside scenario because this would this could well could lead to a change in this trend uh, in the direction of the trend and uh, yep higher levels could be met so keep your eyes on that one for now uh, euro gbp very quickly here the quite interesting uh, so as you can see this level here the the one that i talked about previously the low of the 20th of march near the 0 0.9989995 continues to provide resistance and uh, for now <clears throat> Uh, for now, guys, yes, we need to see a nice good daily close above this in order to aim for higher levels because, as you can see, we keep getting these overshoots, but uh, the daily candles is struggling to stay above this barrier. So if you want, you can you can round it up here a little bit and uh, keep an eye on the 0 0.90 zone. So a nice good uh, close, a uh, nice good daily close above the 0 0.90 zone could yep, increase the chances for this pair to drift higher. Um, <clears throat> even with the downside, we cannot really talk about the downside until, let's say, we get a drop back below the 0 0.8864 zone, and then yes, we could uh, consider, uh, consider lower levels. Uh, but for now, guys, uh, be very careful, uh, be very cautious, and uh, yes, uh, this all this territory right here will be somewhat of a neutral one for us, because as I said, these are the two levels, a break of which we need uh, to see in order to consider a further directional move. And finally, Euro Euro USD. So this is what I talked about this morning, and uh, uh, basically, as you can see, um, this barrier here, the 1.1147, continues to provide resistance, and uh, basically, what I was saying this morning that if if um, this area provides, res can, well, continues to, if the bulls continues to struggle to overcome this area, then, well, we could see a bit of a correction here to the, to the downside. Um, now, another scenario that I had in mind was that if we get even, even if we get a push above this barrier and we get a nice daily close above it, because don't get me wrong, the, we still have the, U, the full U.S. session to go through. This, this pair could continue traveling higher towards the 1.1237, which is, the high of the 16th of March and in a way this is where the kind of the holdup could occur the the rate could then correct lower and uh, this area then could provide uh, or should I say could be seen as a as a potential support zone however as I said that's in the scenario if we do get a daily close above this area above this 1.1147 for now you can see that the bulls are struggling to push the pair higher um, keep your eyes on that one and uh, if, if they do continue, continue to struggle to do so, then maybe the correction could come a little bit earlier. However, we'll keep an eye on the 200-day uh, EMA and the 1.1039 zone as well. So we'll see if this area can provide support then. But um, if it cannot, then, well, a further decline and drop below the 1.0990 zone could do the trick for more sellers. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. For now, like I said, uh, for now, now we are keeping an eye on the 1.1147. We want to see if it, if it today, for example, if it continues to provide resistance. If it can, uh, maybe we could consider a, a, a correction earlier. But if it fails to do so, if it fails to provide resistance, then we'll we'll reevaluate this again because again we want to see where exactly this candle is going to close. If it's going to close very very close uh, 
to this level, to this 1.1147, then um, maybe there could be a chance for a continuation move tomorrow. But we'll have to, like I said, we'll join my video or should I say catch my video uh, tomorrow morning, my, my Traders Espresso. Uh, well, like I said, we'll reevaluate this again. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll take it from there. But again, for now, like I said, guys, uh, you cannot really do much uh, because on one hand, uh, it could correct a little bit lower here uh, before another leg of buying, uh, or it, in a way, like I said, it could overcome this barrier, the 1.1147 and uh, travel further north and then correct and maybe find some resistance good resistance near the 1.1237 and then kind of uh, correct lower so in other words guys um, like I said for now we'll probably take a bit of a neutral stand I would say um, and uh, from the very short term perspective of course because again overall we're more positive than negative however uh, what we don't want to see here is eventually this one drifting let's say sharply back down here dropping all the way back to this key important area of support near the 1.0 777 because in other in this scenario we could get ourselves a wider range so basically the pair was trading here in a smaller range it got out of it and then now it could end up being in a much wider range so that's what we don't want to see but uh, like I said that's why for now we'll, we'll keep it careful uh, and we'll keep on monitoring this 1.1147 zone so let's see how this is gonna play out okay guys so I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening if if you want to join me, or should I say, if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning, as always, my uh, Trader's Espresso around around uh, 6 o'clock GMT time, so maybe a little bit after, uh, like I said, I'll try to upload the video as soon as possible. But again, once uh, once again, guys, I do apologize for uh, not running these videos live uh, again because, uh, well, due to certain circumstances, yep, um, unfortunately, uh, we'll have to uh, keep these videos for now for the, for the next for the next for this week and the, and the week after uh, as a recorded uh, version. So yes, so like I said, I hope you will stay patient with me, and uh, yep, <laughs> I hope you will still stick around with me. So thank you very much, guys, for that uh, for your support. So if you like I said, yep, have a wonderful wonderful trading uh, evening if you're still trading. If you're gonna trade the U.S. session, so yep, uh, be very careful, very cautious, and uh, if if not, then have a wonderful, uh, yeah, or in general, actually, everybody have a wonderful evening today and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much and bye-bye.